Osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is bone loss, essentially. And in spite of what a nationwide television advertisement might tell you, um, bone loss or osteoporosis is not a Fosamax or Boniva deficiency. It is a calcium deficiency. And since your body's bones are made up primarily of calcium and other minerals, you lose calcium from those bones daily. Not just when you're old and feeble, daily, from birth on almost. And the difference is when we're younger, we can replace that calcium efficiently. As we get older, factors change in your chemistry, preventing the reabsorption of calcium back to the bone. And so essentially you get into a position where you're losing more than you're gaining. That's like a bank account. If you take out more than you put in, it isn't long before there's a problem. Well, it's the same with your bones. It's kind of like a storehouse for calcium. If you remove more for bodily function, heart rhythm and various other things, the more than you put back, well, after a while, you get this honeycomb problem, you get brittle bones, you get they break, and all of that. Now, we're told, of course, that that happens primarily in women. It happens slightly more often in women, but not extensively. It just takes men longer to become osteoporotic because their bones are bigger and thicker to start with. So it takes longer for them to deteriorate. But sooner or later, even we'll catch up with the ladies. If we get old enough, then we'll start breaking things too. And we're told uh, that it's hormonal changes. Yeah, you go through menopause, that's it. You gotta be on one of those drugs forever. Well, hormone imbalance plays a very small role, significant but small role in the bone loss process. So if you are in fact in the menopause, you should ensure that your hormone ratios are correct. And that's easy to do with a blood test. Uh, it's easy to do based on symptoms. And we'll talk about menopause in a little while. Um, lack of exercise. We know that resistance exercise increases bone density of the long bones. Those would be the legs and the arms, the hips, the places that you're likely to break anyway. Uh, so resistance exercise, not jumping around. Jumping around is good for your heart and, and important. But resistance exercise is vitally important after the age of 50. And that's the very time in our lives when most people don't do any of it anymore. You know, they'll go walk. I'm going to power walk with the girls. Well, that's just great. But it's not going to do a bit for your bone density. Okay? Um, so you, you need to think about finding a way where you can put some resistance on your legs and arms. Very, very important. Okay. At our research center, we firstly uh, define calcium intake. Calcium is the most difficult mineral for the human body to absorb. And uh, when you take a calcium supplement, you know, the kind you buy in the discount house, lifetime supply for 19 bucks, big honking, chalky things, they're primarily made of a substance called calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is ground up rock. Calcium carbonate has a variety of tricky names. Coral calcium, dolomite, eggshell calcium. This is all stone. And when you ingest that form of calcium, after the age of 45 or 50, your body's ability to absorb calcium to the bone and to the soft tissues of the body is about 15 to 20 percent. Which means if you take 1,000 milligrams of that calcium every day, you're going to get somewhere between 100 and 200 milligrams of calcium. The rest is going to go bye-bye in the potty because you can't absorb it. Because it's very alkaline, calcium like many minerals, absorbs only in an acidic environment. And the acidic environment is created in your body and your stomach by a gastric acid. But of course we don't like gastric acid because we think it causes heartburn and acid reflux and all that doesn't, but we think it does. Just like cholesterol causes heart disease. Just because we all think it doesn't mean it's true. We all know that, that excess stomach acid causes all of these gastric problems because the People who make antacids are paying for advertisements to brainwash you. That's why you all believe it. But 99.9% .9 of all people who suffer from heartburn and acid reflux have too little acid, not too much. But what do we do? We take antacids to ensure we have no acid at all, causing the stomach to dump into the small intestine and prohibiting the absorption of protein, 
and minerals. So, if you want to develop osteoporosis, break your hips, age prematurely, get wrinkled like somebody sucked all the air out of you, take antacids every day of your life, and you'll get there quicker than anybody else.